Hey folks, Mr. Dell here. Uh, we are uh, looking at a problem where I'm given a rule and then I've got to complete a table of values and at that point then graph what I have and describe what my graph looks like. So this is, oh, this is a problem from uh, CPM course three uh, and then it is section 3.2.3. Okay, uh, number 397. So here's my rule. My rule is y, I'll read the directions. For the rule, y equals 4 minus x squared, calculate the y values that complete the table below. The first value is given for you. So that's nice. They, they give me a, a hint here if I need to check. So let's just check that math, right? If I What they said is if I put a negative 3 into that equation, and I'm going to rewrite that equation here, y is equal to 4 minus x squared. So if I put a negative 3 into that, I should get a negative 5, right? That should make sense. So negative 3, what that means is if I take 4, subtract negative 3 squared, I'm going to get negative 5. So 4 minus, well, first of all, we do the uh, exponent. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So then 4 minus 5, excuse me, 4 minus 9, sure enough, yes, it, is, it does equal negative 5. 4 minus five, 9 is negative 5. So that's how they're doing that. That's how they got that value. So we'll do the same thing here. So again, so now I'm going to put in place a negative 2. So negative 2 squared is positive 4. So 4 minus 4 is 0. Okay. And then negative 1. Negative 1 squared, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. Putting in a 0 into x, that goes to just a 0, so 4 minus 0 is 4. Put a 1 in, 1 times 1 is 1, so then 4 minus 1 is 3. Put a 2 in, 2 squared, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 minus 4 is 0. And then put a 3 in, 3 squared, just like this one actually, negative 3 squared is 9. 3 squared, positive 3 squared is also 9, so you're still going to get negative 5. So here's my X and Y axes. I've got my axes already on my graph paper. So you would actually create an X and Y axis if you're using your own piece of graph paper, right? And then plot and connect the dots on your graph. So let's plot these. So this is negative 3, negative 5. So negative 1, 2, 3. Negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's there. Negative 2, 0 is right there. Here's negative 1, positive 3. 1, 2, 3. So there's negative 1, 3. 0, 4 is right here. Then 1, 3 is right there. And then 2, 0 is right there. And then 3, negative 5 is down here. So I've got this shape that I kind of recognize I've done before. If I were to turn this graph upside down, you're going to recognize this and see, oh, that looks like that U shape that we've done before. That U shape we call a parabola. So it connects like this, but let me flip my graph back over. Actually, this is the right way that the graph should be. So what we have here is an upside down parabola. So that's the, make sure you put your arrows because that pattern continues on this. So what does the graph look like? It is an, I would say, an upside down parabola. Okay. Or a parabola open downward instead of open up. You can say that. Okay. So that's what that looks like. Or an upside down U. If you didn't know the word parabola yet, if you weren't sure what that was, it's a U, an upside down U. But we do call that a parabola. And then let's label our graph. Y is equal to uh, 4 minus X squared. We put the name of the graph right on the graph. Okay. All right. There you go.